Hi guys, in this video I'm going to walk you through how to do series circuits. This is for principles of engineering. It could also be used for digital electronics. The concepts are the same. Um, this is a, a pretty basic um, introductory video. So let's talk first about what a series circuit is. What is a series circuit? Just like in the world series, whenever we say um, in series, we got to play game one before we can get to game two. We got to play game two before we can get to game three. Everything comes one after the other. That's what a series circuit is. So we have a battery here, a 12 volt battery that's connected, and we have three resistors that are wired together. But these resistors, now, so this is a schematic that we're looking at. This is not a breadboard view like we did in the previous activity. But in this schematic, we have to go through resistor one to get to resistor two, and through both of those to get to resistor three. So there's only one path for the electricity to follow through before it goes back to the negative end of the battery. So that's what we're working with when you see two resistors or more could be any number and we could have a hundred resistors here but when there's only one path for the electricity to travel through that's a series circuit there are a few characteristics that you want to write down in your notes the the resistors that we have okay so we have resistance current and voltage the resistors add up straight addition and, and the dot, dot, dot at the end of that formula means even if I have 100, I would add all of them up. So this goes on as many resistors as I have in series, but I would add up all of the individual resistances, and that would give me a total resistance. That's what the P stands for. So those are not the powers or anything like that. Those are subscripts. Those are labels. Resistor 1, resistor 2, and 3. You add up their values, you'll have the total resistance. So you can take little resistors and create one big resistor. It's the equivalent of a giant resistor in the end. The other thing we know, since there's only one path, think of it as a bunch of people in a hallway like we talked about in class. If you have a bunch of people walking tightly packed in a hallway and one slows down, all of the rest of them have to slow down too. So when you only have one path, that means that the current has to be the same everywhere. It's going slow in one spot and it's going slow in all spots. If it's moving fast for you, then you know it's moving fast everywhere. So that's because the electricity can't flow faster in one spot of the, in, the, in the circuit or one spot of the path than another. So that's really nice. And the other thing, and I know we talked about this in previous lessons, but the voltage drops just a little bit. Each time it passes through one of these, these resistors, it, the energy level that it has will be reduced, just like a stair step down. So in this previous problem, when we had 12 volts to begin with, when it passes through the first resistor, it loses a little bit of the 12. And when it passes through the 300 ohm resistor, it loses a little bit more. And then after it passes through the 200, it's lost the remaining amount of energy, okay? And it would probably go to figure two that it's gonna take more um, energy to get through a bigger resistor. So keep that in mind. That's gonna be a nice way to kind of check um, our answers and kind of know, you know, or do we have something reasonable? So one of the difficulties in doing these problems is that students will often start to attack them and they're going to be asked to solve for all sorts of things and the question is always like what in the world do i solve for first what do i solve for next how do i get from point a to point b it's usually not the math because the math is just simple it's either division or multiplication it's b equals i r over and over and over again just like we did in the last lesson okay but the problem is students don't know when to do um you know a calculation or what they're trying to solve for so my recommendation to you, in fact, I'm going to force you to do on this homework and you will not find an easier way. You will not find an easier way to do problems than this. Set up a table. The table is going to have a placeholder for resistance, current, and voltage. And we're going to put those as our column, column headers. And it's going to have down the side a label for each location along the circuit. So we have a total voltage, a total current, and a total resistance. So for the overall circuit, what's the voltage current resistance? And then we also have those same three measurements at each of the three locations along the path where we have a resistor. So how do we solve? First thing we do is we just fill in the given quantities. We know that the total voltage is 12 volts. We know that we have those three resistances. We're just gonna transfer them over. Notice the order. Let's make sure we put them in the correct order. That's gonna be important. So 100, 300, and 200. The next step then, and by the way, you can pause this video at any given time if you need to like stop and write things down if you're taking notes. The next step would be this then. What we know, one of those characteristics about a series circuit is that we just add up all of the resistances and that'll give me the total resistance. So let's do that. What's 100 plus 300 plus 200? 600 ohms. So what we're saying by doing this is we're saying if we needed to, 
we could take these three resistors out and we could replace it with a single resistor that's we could replace it with a single resistor that is 600 ohms in size and it would do the equivalent of everything that we've done here okay so that's really what we're saying by total resistance these three little resistors would act like one 600 ohm resistor by itself now that we have this see the nice thing is you may notice that if v is equal to i times r our goal in each of these rows going across would be this anytime we have two quantities if we have voltage and we have resistance that means that we can solve for current and so anytime you know down later on if we have current and resistance these two we could solve for the voltage you know you just need two of the three to solve for the unknown that's where we are with the total right we have 12 volts of total and we have 600 ohms of total resistance so therefore i can solve for the total current 12 is equal to i times 600 we take 12 divided by 600 we would get 0 0.02 so that'd be 0 0.02 amps which we would probably write in engineering notation or using si prefixes as 20 milliamps 20 thousandths of an amp 0 0.02 in fact maybe i'm going to type this in here 0 0.020 might be an easier way to see it because now you can see where that third decimal point would go now we need to know a little bit about series circuits to move forward remember we said there's only one path and the speed this the current of the electricity through that circuit has to be the same everywhere so if you found the 20 milliamps total that means you found all of the currents we just have to copy those values down and now the beautiful thing is this you know that you have two out of three things in each of the rows so that means all we have to do for the remainder of these problems to find how much how much energy how much voltage we drop going across the first resistor second resistor third resistor it's just i times r in each of those three rows so in the first one we find out it drops two volts the second one it drops six volts and the third resistor it drops four volts by the way two plus six is eight and eight plus four is 12. no surprise okay notice also 300 it takes six volts the 100 ohm it takes two volts 100 times 3 is 300 2 times 3 is 6. it takes twice as much energy to get through the 200 as through the 100. you see the patterns that exist i hope i hope you see those things and go okay all right that makes sense now i obviously gave you numbers that are nice and neat okay it's not always going to work out that way so what we're going to do is we're going to round to two decimal places after we convert to something like milliamps so if you get like 0 0.00533 call it 5.33 milliamps a round after the two two decimals after you do the conversion so it's your turn i'm going to let you go through and do a couple of problems and whenever you get done um, i have an answer key for you at the end of the powerpoint slide but make sure you write down the circuit make sure you copy down the table show your work label your answer make i want to see milliamps or voltage or ohms or whatever it is and there will be a quiz on this later on where i'm going to ask you to do it and that'll be worth points as well so this is completion points um, and I just want you to try to practice it, work together, see how you do.